Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Virtual Nunchucks. Welcome to the channel. I am so glad that you're here and I'm so glad to be back. Um, where was I? What did I do? What happened? Where did I go? I didn't go anywhere. I had my review for um, uh, Maneater, the game you're seeing on the screen, ready to go and uh, everything on Monday last week and yeah, um, the the PS4 and the YouTube app stopped talking together, and so for a full week, uh, I could not post content, could not upload content, uh, could not, uh, well, I could edit content, but I could not uh, upload it or uh, sign into my YouTube account at all from my PlayStation, which is where I do most of my work for our channel, um, because it's just easier for me as a disabled gamer. It's The controls are easier, the whole bunch of stuff is easier to do. So uh, I just couldn't do it. Um, couldn't find a jump drive, uh, or at least couldn't find my jump drive to um, go to my PC and do it. So I just had to take the week and just call it uh, and have a mulligan this week. Uh, so that's where I was. Didn't ha didn't have any family emergencies or anything. It just it just happened. So I hope you guys can forgive me. I was very active on Twitter, however, for the week, so if you want to see what's going on there, you need to check my Twitter account, at Uh so it is what it is. So I'm back. Uh, every Monday through Friday, we do something fun and interesting on this channel, and hey, if you're new around here and you want to talk about games, whether it's opinion pieces, whether it's news updates, gameplay, or reviews, that's what we do around here, and we also talk about disabled gamers from time to time, and the peripherals and the different accessibility options that we have as disabled gamers because I am one of those people and uh, it affects me so I talk about it uh, other than that guys I do have a couple of news things for you one one of those big news things is, is PS5 reveal event the future of gaming is what they're calling it will happen at 10 a.m. Pacific time which is 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so if you are uh, interested at, at all uh, to see what uh, PS5's future or PlayStation's future is going to look like. Uh, you can check it out on YouTube on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, or you can check it out, of course, on their blog and on their Twitch channel as well. They're going to go everywhere and try to get as many people to look at it as they can. Uh, we're going to see games, hopefully. Uh, well, we know we're going to see games for sure. We're going to see games. Hopefully, we're going to see the actual console, the design of the console. That'd be awesome. I hope to see uh, PS5 it, it, price points, that would be nice. Um, I'm hopeful to see that. I don't think we're going to see the price point. I don't think we're going to see it until probably August. Although, to be fair, I need to see it so I can decide if I'm going to save up enough money to pre-order it and that kind of stuff. I need to know how much I need to do. So that's just my, my opinion on the matter as far as that goes. Uh, I... Uh... I hope that we see, here's what I hope we see. I hope we see interesting uh, first party IPs. Um, <coughs> even, <laughs> sorry guys. Even if it's um, things like Horizon Zero Dawn 2, uh, I, I don't know that we're going to see that, but it'd be kind of neat if we did. Uh, if it's stuff like, oh, I don't know, um, surprises with some new IP that you, you've been working on in the dark, at secret corners of the universe or something but I want to see first party games uh, because that's what separates the two consoles uh, is what the studios themselves Microsoft and Sony can come up with uh, some people say well you know exclusive shouldn't matter uh, but I, I disagree because you know that's why you have first party Studios, and the only thing we saw on the Xbox side, which I'm trying to get excited, Xbox guys, I really am, but only thing we saw, uh, really, uh, from the Xbox reveal event was um, third-party titles and things like that. And we all know we're going to get an Assassin's Creed, we're going to get a Grand Theft Auto, we're going to get, you know, uh, the next Watch Dogs title or the next. Call of Duty or whatever, we know we're going to get those things. Uh, I want to see what what is new and what is exciting. And now you guys understand, if you're seeing up on the screen, why I hate Orcas. They're just so irritatingly uh, difficult. Anyway, um, so I kind of hope to see um, exciting first-party titles and a price point. That would be awesome. 
Um, if we don't, that's okay. Um, but you know, I, I, I want to see what's going on. The other thing they mentioned though, is that if you're watching it on Thursday, you're going to see it all in 1080p and 30 frames per second. Uh, but they, I guess it's just because of compression, uh, when you're streaming stuff, they want to make it look as pretty as they can on the internet. But after the event, they will release 4K trailers and all the glorious graphics after the event so that you can see what it actually looks like um, in all the PS5 glitz and glamour, I guess. So you have that. Uh, the other thing that was mentioned this week was that EA is going to start putting some titles together on the Steam platform on PC. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so they'll basically diversify their platforms where they put their games, which I kind of thought was a good move. However, what we don't know is exactly what titles are going to be put there. We don't know if it's going to be new titles. We don't know if it's going to be just like some of the more uh, ancient titles that are out there. Um, but you'll start seeing EA titles appear on Steam very, very shortly, so you might want to check that out if you're more of a Steam person versus a EA Access person or a Epic Store person. If you want some EA titles, you can start going to Steam as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other big, big piece of news was that uh, Destiny 2's new season um, is going to start very, very soon. And to cap that event off, they blew the... I forget what it's called. Oh, I feel so bad. But they blew something up. Okay. Uh, and according to everything that I have seen on the internet, it was very, very slow and very, very, very boring. Uh, so I'm sorry for you Destiny 2 fans. Um, but <laughs> apparently it was very, very boring. I did not see it. Uh, I... I didn't have access to a lot of stuff uh, this last week, so it was kind of hard to do. Um, but, um, yeah, it just happened. and I hope that the season, uh, Destiny 2 itself is a good game. I mean, I'm not a very big looter shooter um, person, but I do know that the gameplay and the characters that I have run into uh, with my son and things like that, they're fun to they're fun. It's fun to play. It's fun to shoot things. It's fun. You know, the characters make me laugh, and 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 uh, the story makes me you know kind of curious. But I just couldn't get behind Destiny 2. Not because I don't care about the world. It's just that I'm not a big fan of looter shooters and live service games that go on forever. And so, uh, I hope that Destiny 2's new season is a good one. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see what information we can get hold of because I do have people that care about that uh, my my nephews play it my son plays it so I try to keep on top of it and um, keep you guys informed uh, about things like that so we'll keep an eye on that but I'm sorry that the event didn't go over as well as they'd hoped uh, that does make me sad because you know when you want to have an event you want to have an event right um let's see and the other big big thing that was discussed over the week was Activision CEO Bobby Kotick and his salary. Some shareholders believe that they need to lower the salary. Some believe that they don't need to touch it at all. And it sounds like uh, the debate will rage on for quite some time. Uh, to give you both sides, okay, I'm going to stay as neutral as I can. But to give you both sides, here's what both sides are saying. One is saying, hey, look, he um, he has a contract. He has um, certain goals he has to meet, certain milestones he has to meet, and certain profit margins he has to meet. And if he meets those, he gets paid his salary of $30 plus million. If he doesn't, then he doesn't get paid as much, and he only gets paid based on his performance for that quarter or whatever the case may be. So that's, you know, that's their side. And the other side says, well, um, he makes too much money. The benchmarks are too easy, you know, or, or maybe, you know, we need to, we need to reevaluate, uh, certain incentives, uh, to make them a little more difficult. Um, or maybe we just need to cut his salary entirely and, and make it more reasonable so that, uh, the employees can, can benefit better. And I'm all for that. Look, 
I'm all for that. My wife, my my wife. Um, I told you I was going to stay neutral, and I and and I'm going to try. Okay, so let me give you both scenarios um, from from both perspectives because I've been in the business world a long time. Okay, um, if you work hard and you do what you're asked to do and you meet those goals, then you ought to get you paid. Okay. If you have a contract that says if I do X, Y, Z, I get paid X, Y, Z. Okay, you ought to get paid your X, Y, Z if you meet your goals. If you don't, you don't get paid. That's as simple as it goes. Uh, same thing with sports. Uh, contracts with sports players, football players, if they make a certain amount of, you know, let's just say touchdowns if you're a wide receiver. Uh, or if you're a running back, you score X amount of touchdowns or run as many yards, you get paid certain incentives. If they meet those goals, fine, they get paid. If they don't, they don't get paid those incentives. Those incentives go away. But the base salary uh, that they sign up for, uh, they get. Okay. Um, you know, that that's a reasonable expectation. If you set benchmarks, then you meet those benchmarks, then you're expected to get paid a certain amount. That's what you sign. That's what you should get. However, on the flip side of that, um, if Activision shareholders want to give their employees more money or more incentives for doing what they do, uh, and they want to kind of cut back on the executive salaries to put more money in the company and things like that, I'm also all for that. And here's why. Okay, uh, there there has to be a balance. Um, and again, I'm trying to be neutral, but I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. My wife makes very good money at what she does now. Um, for the company she works for, but the company that she works for uh, has a profit-sharing program where the executives and the and the company, if they make a certain amount of money, whatever whatever money profit-wise that they make for the year, that is divvied up between the employees. The executives, of course, get paid whatever they get paid, but they do share the profits with the employees. They get a certain amount of money based on the profits of that year, uh, divvy up to the employees uh, every year. So she gets cut a nice check uh, once a year based on uh, how the company performed. So that gives her incentive to work very hard uh, to make sure her company is profitable, to make sure her company does what they're supposed to do. Um, and it incentivizes her to do her job well. Because she knows that there's a payout uh, coming, uh, profit sharing time. And some companies, uh, a lot of companies, I say a lot, there are quite a few companies that will do that. So I can kind of understand the, I can kind of understand both sides of the fence. So, you know, whatever they work out, I hope they work it out. But I, like I said, I was trying to stay as neutral as I can um, because, you know, uh, this is a gaming channel. It's not a opinion channel too much. I try to stay away from that kind of stuff. But that's the news. So that's the debate. And I guess we'll watch it and see how it plans out because it does affect how games are developed. It does affect how how the company will will go forward. And it does affect what kind of stuff they will spend their money on developing and 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 all that kind of stuff. So it does matter. So, um, but those are the real big pieces of uh, news that I had uh, for the week, simply because a lot of the stuff has already happened uh, this weekend, and I didn't have access to it. PlayStation Plus titles for the month of June are Call of Duty World War II and uh, Battlefront II. Um, the only piece of news that goes along with those, of course, is that Battlefront 2 and EA both announced that after this most recent update, whatever it was, uh, whether it was a playlist change or characters or whatever, there will be no more updates after this one. So the live service game will, as far as content drops, will end after their most recent update. They're not planning on doing any more content drops for that game. However, I will say that uh, because DICE stuck to it, and because DICE uh, stuck to their guns and continued to update the game and continue to improve the game, it is a very fun uh, game to play if you're into the Star Wars universe and shooters and space and all that kind of stuff. If you're into that, it's a very fun game to play uh, with your friends, uh, both on split screen and 
on the internet if you want to do that. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. I like it, but I haven't played it since probably release because I was so mad at the the way certain things were. But that has been dropped, and it is a lot of fun to play. It was just a very irritating progression system when it started. So just be aware of that. You're not going to see a whole lot of content drops from now on. Uh, with that game um, because I think they're going to move on to other games and other things and that's the problem with the live service game is uh, once there's not enough player base or once the company says well we got to move on to other projects you kind of sort of lose that so that's kind of sad um, but I kind of hope whatever title they come up with next or whatever Star Wars game comes out next I hope I hope 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 that it's actually good uh, and that there's not a problem. Jedi Follow in Order was good. Um, so I kind of hope whatever they come up with next either tops it or or at least is on par with it because it was good. All right, guys, that's what I have for you. It wasn't much, but again, like I said, I've been kind of not able to do anything for a week, so I'm kind of doing a little catch-up. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, just don't forget that the next review that we're going to do, aside from uh, Maneater, which, by the way, again, is on the channel. If you want to take a look at that, you can. Um... I'm sorry it wasn't up Monday last week, but it it is what it is. Um, but the next review we're going to do is Ghost of Tsushima uh, coming out on July 17th. Don't forget, I do have to pay for my own games, so that's why we do it on day one, and we start playing it then. And I'll get the review up for that as soon as I can, obviously, uh, once we get a hold of the game. And then the next review after that will be September the 4th, when Avengers uh, Marvel's Avengers comes out from Square Enix and... Uh, and we'll obviously play that for you guys, put that on the channel for you guys, and then, of course, review that. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to get off of here, and I'm going to find out what I'm going to do for tomorrow, because I have no idea. But we'll play something, we'll talk about something, we'll do something. I have no idea what. But I hope you guys will consider subscribing. Uh, hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever content hits the channel, because I try very, very hard, with the exception of last week, to do every Monday through Friday uh, on this channel. Uh, so we talk about games all the time. And I hope to see you guys around. Don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook.com slash Virtual Nunchucks over on Twitter at VNunchucks and, of course, Twitch.tv slash Virtual Nunchucks. But I am mostly on Twitter at VNunchucks and, of course, here on YouTube. Um, it's not that I don't love my other platforms and all that stuff, uh, but this is the uh, this is the main flagship uh, tent pole, I guess, if you will. So there you go. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Uh, don't forget, you can always leave me a comment. I will talk to you guys, uh, whether it's Twitter, uh, whether it's here on YouTube, um, you know, whatever. I'll talk to you guys, I promise. So if you have an opinion, let me know. Don't forget to like the video. We'll see you guys in the next one. And have a great day, guys.